Hi guys and welcome back to the channel at VAG Technic. So we have a very familiar car here, Audi A6, what you've seen on the previous video when we were doing some kind of uh, inspection or technical report for the gentleman. So this A6 was here to basically diagnose a fault, which I think we did diagnose it correctly. So at the moment we are just gonna put million pounds for material and a bit of a labor on there. We already put the BG, what you've seen, and as you heard on the video, which I really hope you did hear it, the engine is making a bit of a rattling noise, what you've seen on the previous video, the chain is a bit loose, so it's a combined sound from the engine, from the chain, and the worn out camshaft sprockets. So in this video, we'll be removing the engine from the A6. We also have the A8, which was in another video here, for the same inspection, same problem. The only difference is this is paid part-time warranty, and the A8 is paid out full under warranty. The owner only have to pay us for the inspection sheet, basically for the labor to strip it down, document it with pictures and videos and contact the warranty company with everything what we found wrong. I will also try to get the video footage from Audi what I was mentioning, that the technician is walking around and he's saying like, there's nothing to worry about the engine, have some kind of a noises which is really hard to identify. Turn some investigation into the two issues you brought your vehicle for, the first one being the, um, the, the knocking noise from the engine, uh, I agree there is a slightly louder ticking noise from the driver's bank one um, camshaft area and than there is on the bank two. Um, but again, the, these engines sort of tend to run like this sometimes and each engine is individual and sometimes these noises are louder on, on some engines than on the others. Um, but, um, but whether this is actually a fault or a characteristic is, is difficult to prove. I believe your vehicle was in in January and we've uh, recommended cams, uh, camshafts and uh, chains change intentioners, um, whether or not this would make an improvement of the characteristic, I don't know. Um, as this is not affecting engine performance and is more of an aesthetic noise, um, it would be down to the warranty company whether or not they would go ahead and replace anything at a cost. Um, so, like I say, I personally and my other um, master tech, uh, Ash at Khan, his opinion, we both um, agree that this is probably not actually a fault, it's just more of a characteristic. Um, so we'll, we'll price, uh, by all means, price up cam chains and cam shafts, but again, cannot guarantee that this will uh, have any effect on the noise. But I think we did identify the problem by stripping it down and uh, we found out the worn out sprockets. Also, the chain is not 100% tension on the A8 even after we spin the engine. So. Uh, we will take uh, both of the engines out and we have a bit of a problem because one of the S4s is stuck on the run wearing for the material. So first one will go the A6, then we will put the A8 on in a couple of days and obviously we have to change loads of stuff. But loads of people were asking me underneath the comments on the video when we actually done the inspection, like how do you know that the camshaft sprockets are worn out? So. The plan is we will take it out, we will put the pin in, so basically the pretension will be gone and we will check the play in the sprockets between uh, the, the two gears. So then we will compare it with the setup which is done from Audi and we will see what's the difference. So first of all, Audi on the ramp, as you've seen, we already put the EPR on there, so we've done the oil flush, that'll be drained out. Afterwards, we'll put the BG DLC, which is diesel oil conditioner, and hopefully we'll sort out the problem. Okay guys, so the engine is stripped down. We didn't done really footage about it because everybody knows how uh, freely the TDI is stripped down. Full of internet, so nothing interesting to see. The timing chain cover was removed as, as you can see that this oil tensioner wasn't tensioning the chain properly. And that's why the whole chain, actually the main one for the crankshaft and camshaft was loose in the middle. 
around the balance shaft, which is locked with a very professional tool with a drill bit, which will fit exactly where it should fit. But meanwhile, we were discussing like how we will prove or find out that actually the play, what's between this gear setup on both sides is too much. So we do have like a homemade tool for a crankshaft we'll be using. So we will put a metal sheet, which will be probably that much long, maybe. And that should actually show us better if we will screw it directly on this, on the end, like what's the play. So we will be measuring how much is moving on the end. Uh, the play between these two gears, mainly these two sprockets. And obviously then we will put a new setup. We will do it according to the manual, how it should be. And we will be comparing what's the play in between them. Because you can see it's not much. It's not much, but it's definitely, I think, more than it should be. If you've seen the previous video, you know what's the condition of the sprockets. If you didn't see the video, this is the condition of the sprockets. So it's not ideal. You can see the material missing from there. So obviously we did already lock them with these locking pins. And the other side, by my opinion, is even worse. You can see especially here how the material is missing. So yeah, that's definitely not good. So the plan is we will try to measure what's the play between them. Also, we have everything ready here. That means brand new camshafts with the sprockets, with timing chain kit, all the gaskets. We also have hydraulic lifters because the owner is a smart guy. He don't want to do everything twice. So new hydraulic lifters and obviously, again, new sprockets, new bolts, new rails, new gaskets, loads of loads of things. So what you see here on the table is probably five and a half grand worth of material. The camshafts are stupid money and the sprockets are stupid money and also the carriers, aluminium ones for bank one and bank two. So yeah, also water pump because that's due. So, you know, when we're going to finish the chain job, we have to move on to the carbon cleaning because uh, if you have a look inside the... Uh, it's not the worst, it's not the worst, but obviously it's worth doing now. So we will get a BG cleaning machine in probably a couple of days. So we will be able to do like a service, a chemical cleaning for the inlet manifold. And just to show you how the inlet manifold looks like from the plastic side. So this is how it's going to cylinder head, which is not the best, but not the worst. But if you have a look here, where's the EGR directly, that is disgusting. So I think if you're going to use the BG chemical cleaning for the intake, every oil change, you will get away and the inlet will stay clean. So that is the plan. But meanwhile, what we have to do is sort out this. So let's put the tool what we have and let's try to measure what's the play. Okay guys, so homemade special tool for 3 litre third generation, check the clearance on the setup over there. So what we've done, we used the old sprocket and we weld something what we found in the workshop. The whole point is when we are moving this sprocket by hand, this is what you see. So you don't see too much how it's moving, but because we make uh, a longer bracket, so we can see the movement more further down, which is, you know, much better to see and much better to measure than be just measuring something what's not really measurable. So the plan is right now, this is properly attached to the sprocket over there. So we are just measuring the clearance between this sprocket and this sprocket. This is fully locked into the cylinder head. And we also remove this pin. So these two are basically with the pretension sprocket in between them. So these ones are pretty much stiff. So, Mr. Dave, do we have the measuring thingy? So the plan is what we will do is put it over there so it will touch and this is our clearance. 
We will do the same on the other side, on four hole, which will be somewhere over there. We will measure it, then we will replace the whole setup with the gears and the sprockets, and we will do the measurements again, we will see what's the difference between used and new. Also, if you have a look, there's a mark, and it should be there. And the mark, which should be here, is on the opposite side as well, so unfortunately from the factory setup. There we go. So unfortunately from the factory setup, as you see, is not as it should be. So I'm not sure what, what they were doing, probably they find out a couple of years later, but obviously it shouldn't be like that. Same. Okay, so situation update. We did put the camshaft in, along with the carriers, along with the new bolts, along with everything. As you can see, we are in a timing position. So we have two marks on uh, the intake, one on the exhaust. So that's lining up nicely. Also, there's a mark on this sprocket that's aiming towards this port, probably oil port or something, don't know. And one side is sorted, the other side is done as well. Again, timing position is in place. Again, this arrow is aiming over there. We did turn the wheel according to the manual, so it will touch. And then we turn it anti-clockwise by this much, how much is the mark over there. So that's the setup. This is the play what we have inside. And again, we will use our special tool, what we made. And we have to, oh, we don't have to, we don't have to, but I wanna check what's the play before and after the replacement. So this, how it should be set up by the manual. As you can see, the play, it's, it's not big. And obviously, again, we will do uh, we will take the grenade pin out from this side, so there will be... So again, we will remove this grenade pin out, so there will be tension between the two camshaft sprockets, same on the other side. And we will just try to measure the play between these two sprockets and these two. So let's check it and let's compare it. Okay guys, so you put the tool on, one and the second one, and as you can see... It is just by looking at it, I think there's less play, I would say. But we have a special tool. Do we have the special tool in hand? Try to put it on there. So this is how much we are putting in. And that should be exactly the clearance what we find out. So we're not forcing it up and down. There's absolutely no space in between it. So it should be fine. And if you're gonna measure it now, we will have, we will have 1.989 millimeters. So that is almost a millimeter difference compared to the previous setup. So, well, it is definitely less play. And what we have to do now is swap it around. We will check the other side, which if it will be the same, basically, distance. Uh, that means we done the setup according to the menu exactly the same, left and right. And also that should prove that the previous setup, the sprockets were actually worn out in between two sprockets uh, from the camshaft to this gear wheel. And we will compare it with the other side. Okay, guys, so we put the tool on again, second tool there again. Uh, I am just looking that we are not exactly actually touching it. It needs to go, see, slightly upwards or slightly like this. Now we are, yes. Okay, put it on there. Mm-hmm. 
So how much we have? 0 0.94 let's say okay we, we will not be counting the hundreds of a millimeter because it's not exact measurement unfortunately ah, it's just one nine again yeah so the hundreds of millimeters are jumping here and there because the tool is not accurate but mainly what we try to prove here is that we managed to set up left and right sort of the same and mainly what we prove i think i hope is that this play after replacement is much less than it was also bear in mind there's absolutely no oil in between it so that can do a bit of a change in the measurement as well so the gear setup is completely dry on both sides but we will take the tools off now uh, we have to put a new timing chains on uh, like i said what we've done now is just out of curiosity what's happening also the new camshaft will be put on with the sprockets and everything has a different part number again so i'll be probably done a small upgrade here and there again the coating of the sprocket is different and you know i'll be always uh, figure out what they probably messed up they replaced the part numbers but that's just our guess meanwhile they removed the water pump which will be replaced and we have to continue with the whole timing chain set up with all the brackets tied everything to the newton meter spec and hopefully the engine will be in today or tomorrow Okay, so I leave there to continue with the A6. I'll move to the A8 and listen to the engine. Okay guys, so the Audi A8 is on the ramp. Dave here, meanwhile, is working on the A6, which is fully stripped to bits. And as usual, we put the EPR in there, so we're gonna drain the oil, put a new filter. And we have to remove the engine. The A8 has much more space in the front than the A6. But yeah, this is the 210 kilowatt engine, which is not my favorite. We have AdBlue, the 48 volt system and everything. So it's a bit of a pain to remove the engine from the chassis, but it is removable. So yeah, let's get to it. We strip it down. We will see what was the noise coming from this side.
Okay guys, so now the engine is stripped down. Meanwhile, the first engine is stripped back together, slowly but surely. That will be going into the car. And, well, this engine, 30,000 miles, I would say, all the timing chain parts, well, there was not an issue. Uh, when I was doing the check, the oil tensioner wasn't tensioning properly, but today when I actually drop off the timing chain covers, it was fully tensioned. But we will be replacing it under warranty and obviously sprockets. So you heard the noise and I think this play, it's quite big. You can have a look from the top as well, how it's moving. So I think the sprockets have quite a big play in between the mine sprocket and the camshaft, but we have our special tool that we made, so we will put it on there. And again, we will be measuring by how much is moving the sprocket in between the other sprocket. And again, special tool is on. As you can see, it is touching this. So this is the clearance or the play between the sprockets. So I already have what's going in there. And obviously, if we will put it in there and there's still play, this is the height what we are measuring. And that is just over three millimeters. So the engine, what they've put in back together, the worn out camshaft sprockets was like 2.8. And after replacement, we get to under two millimeters. So we definitely have probably the biggest play so far. So what we do next is swap it onto the bank two left side and we will check that. I'm really hoping we will see some tear and wear on the sprockets when we're gonna remove them. And I'm also gonna check the old camshafts with the sprockets when they're gonna be removed. And once we will put everything new again, we will check it after we do the setup according to the menu, what's the clearance and compare it. No. Okay guys, so we strip everything down. We check everything, like what's the visual state of it, because we can't really check too much. I can confirm there's quite loads of material missing from the camshaft sprockets, what I'll show you later. I did also strip down one of the sprockets for the chain. Uh, to check the bearings and stuff, so that looks pretty much good. And obviously, when I remove the carriers with the cams, bank one, this hydraulic lifter, and these three on top are very soft, but they will be replaced anyways. However, I'm really hoping that after we will replace all of these components, that there will be no more the, the tapping noise coming from the engine. So. It is a bit funny because when I done the inspection, also the tensioner was loose, so the chain was rattling a bit. Even when I turned the engine a few times, didn't really tension it. When I strip it down now, the chain was tensioned. I also did check the hydraulic lifters uh, when the rocker covers were actually removed, and they seems to be in good condition. However, after removal now, they are soft, so we definitely have to replace them. But uh, let's check all the material what's on the table to show you what I think is wrong. Okay, so this is the needle bearing for one of the sprockets. You can see the play up and down. That's not a problem really, but I was curious like if there's any damage inside, but it looks nice and shiny. So I think it was all right. When it comes to these aluminium housings for the camshaft, I don't think there's any damage or any problem. We also have all these locks in the cam, so that's fine. And the main issue, what I think it is the issue, are uh, the sprockets. So if you have a closer look, especially here, you can see how the material is missing. So all this is not just a small debris, but realistically that is a hole in the sprocket teeth and I think that might be making some noise. Also, you can see the surface, how it's damaged, and the coating is already gone. Same on the other side, look at the condition, especially here, where it's 
hitting the pretension sprocket from the cam. So this wheel, which has a spring, I think it's, it's making so much pressure how it's turning. That look at the state of it. So you can see how the end of the tooth was just gathering the material on the end and then it becomes like a step. So it's not nice and smooth anymore, but literally there's a groove and the whole sprocket look like this. Look, there's literally material missing from the surface when they come together. So the oil map, what we're doing is definitely doing something but obviously these are not lubricated anyhow like I mentioned in the previous video they are only lubricated from the oil pressure or from the leftover oil how it's going around the cover and all the oil is just getting to the gears and that's it so there's no direct lubrication uh, when it comes to the camshaft sprockets with, is with this narrower sprockets I don't see as much as damage like on these with the wider sprocket which is uh, connecting this for the chain and the other cam so again if you have a closer look see how the material is missing from them and if you have a closer look from this side this one is the better one still but you can see how it's missing material of inside of the sprocket so like I said I'm not sure if it's manufacture defect or what's going on all I can say in Europe there's loads of loads of people having problem with this and obviously if you're listening to the engine you can easily spot the high pitch noise coming from it and it might be from this gear setup on the timing chain so yeah, it's not really a happy solution, but it is what it is. And I personally think the new camshafts, again, with a different number, uh, the digit on the end is different, all four of them. And you can also see that the surface is, you know, done different way. So I'm not sure if there's a stronger, harder material, but yeah, so far we've done a few and I can't really confirm if it's a long-term solution or what will happen. Obviously, this car already have the oil map done not a long time ago, but uh, that was done when the noise was already there, so pretty late. But yeah, again, we've got everything new for this engine. Like I said, these hydraulic lifters, see how they soft. This one is hard, this one is soft as well. This one's getting soft, this one is fully hard. This one is hard and this one is like really soft, it's just going all the way down. On the other cylinder head, they are all stiff, so they're not moving even a bit. But anyways, they will be all replaced. So as usual, clean up everything. We will put new hydraulic lifters on there. We have the new camshaft along with the sprockets ready to go on and the carriers. So yeah, too much to be swapped, too much money and i'm really hoping after we will do all this uh, there will be no more noise like you heard on the beginning of the video so let's do it Okay, so again we have everything installed, so that means all the gear with the camshafts are in place, everything was tied to the Newton meter spec. We put the homemade tool in there, along with the other tool, so this is our clearance after we set up the sprocket according to the manual. So the manual is saying that this cut has to be on this aluminium for the cylinder head, along with this cut over here then we should turn it so it will touch the sprocket behind it and then it should go back by this much where's the mark 
on this part of the sprocket. I'm not sure if you see it, it's somewhere over there. Anyways, it was done according to the menu. Whoever have the menu will have it. If you don't have it, you don't need it anyways because you will never do it. But this is the clearance according to the menu from Audi. So if we will put the measuring thing is in there. And if we're gonna check it now, we are on not even two millimeters. Yeah, so 2.09 millimeters, so that's much less clearance than we have when uh, we actually remove or before we remove the setup what was there. So that's the clearance what should be there. Uh, what we're gonna do next, we'll swap the tool on the other side just to confirm if it's equal. And obviously then we have to put it back together with new chains, new brackets, tensioners. We still have to do the carbon cleaning on the intake and put it back into the car. Meanwhile, they finished the A6, so the reason why we cranked the engine on the start like this is just to build up the oil pressure, don't worry, we have plenty of fuel pressure. Okay guys, so that's the A6 gone. Uh, the owner was pretty much happy because the noise was also out. So that's fine. However, we do have a bit of a small issue with the Audi A8, where you see him behind me. The engine did start, obviously, from the footage, how you seen how we were starting the engine. Uh, accidentally, I filmed a problem, what happened while starting it, what shouldn't happen. But that will be another video. All I can tell you, we have a problem with the mild hybrid system, so the 48 volt battery. And yeah, we will have to figure out in the next video. 
Uh, what I want to say about the 48 volt system, it is quite complicated. Uh, we never have done it, so we have to educate ourselves. And for the whole video, as you see on the footage, uh, we're not trying to point fingers that there shouldn't be any play between the sprockets. Uh, we try to prove that before we actually strip it down, what was the gaps between them and what was the gaps after we actually set up the sprockets according to the out the manual. From the numbers, you can tell it was probably twice as much as shouldn't been. So that makes me wondering or putting myself or asking myself a question if it wasn't built uh, according to the manual from the factory or somebody was digging in the engine before us and the gaps were just not set it correctly but also you've seen the damage on the sprockets the pitting the whole surface of the sprocket was damaged which can cause a noise as well uh, I'm not even saying about the hydraulic lifters on one of the cylinder heads so it is a funny situation, especially with the A8, done only 30,000 miles and the car is still not running. Uh, we will keep you updated on the A8 in the next video. And obviously the A6 is good, so the noise is definitely sorted. You heard it before and after. So I think uh, the repair will be carried out, sort out the problem with the noisy engine. Uh, we will see you in the next video. Don't know what I will be filming something interesting hopefully and take care for now thank you for watching and see you in the next one see ya